Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this webinar by Core Recruitment. Core Recruitment has been doing a series of webinars through these very strange times and um, covering a different uh, variety of topics and workshops as well. And uh, we did actually announce a couple of weeks ago that we were going to be um, scaling back the numbers of webinars we've been doing. And we had a bit of an outcry from people saying that they were really enjoying them. So we're going to be keeping up our events uh, program um, up until at least the middle of September. So if you have got areas that you would like us to focus on, or perhaps have speakers that you would like to get involved in these webinars, uh, then please do get in touch with me on krishnan at corerecruitment.com. Now we have got a great webinar today that um, Amber's put together for us. I've actually known Amber for years since she was a, a sales manager at Novus going way back and I think I was kind of a junior recruitment consultant so <laughs> it's a real privilege to kind of have her oh, here today. <laughs> now oh. sitting, no sitting on a webinar, now sitting on a webinar, like you know <laughs> the mountains we have crossed. Um, but we are, um, but it's really great to have her here today and she's going to tell us a little bit about her uh, business bums on seats and then run over kind of like a little bit about tips and um, and she's got a little presentation that she's going to run over as well. Now there's going to be three kind of natural pauses kind of like, you know, through the presentation. So if you've got any questions, please, please, please message them through on the Q&A just at the bottom of the screen. And, um, and then I can uh, pose them to Amber when she pauses for breath at those points. And then at the end, we'll do a little Q&A session as well. So if there's anybody who wants to get involved or perhaps even to get on camera, um, just if you want to stick your hand in the air um, or drop me a quick message, then we can get you on if there's any comments or questions that you want in the last kind of like 10, 15 minutes or so. So Amber, after that great introduction, yes. over to you. Brilliant. So thank you so much for inviting me to do this, Christian. This is great. Um, so as you've heard, uh, I've been in the industry for a, a very long time, uh, back to the good old days of Novus Leisure, Drake and Morgan. And then five years ago, I set up an independent consultancy where I was working on long term contracts with people like Casual Dining Group, Delta Group. And that led me to the idea to create a um, all round outsourced sales agency for purely for the hospitality sector. Um, that launched in January 2019. So this is year two business for us, uh, which I'm sure we're all feeling that level of pain. Um, but the business model, um, I I'm really proud of it. And ultimately what we do at Bums on Seats is we are experts in everything and anything to do with pre-book sales. Um, I have a team of 14 very skilled consultants that all come from different levels of experience. So I've got a private hiring events expert. I've got a casual dining expert. I've got a pub sector expert. And um, we offer a uh, four pillars and four services to the sector and these four pillars um, are quite clever hopefully because what they do is they take you through the entire journey of ensuring you have a fully functioning and, and, and fantastic sales team and if you don't have a sales team you can manage it yourself as operators and they are um, identify and analyze so i created auditing to the, to the sector where we go in and we look at your business and we audit your current pre-book sales and your current sales culture and setup and provide you with solutions based on your business needs the second is upskilling, and we do that through sales training. Um, and next week, we are about to launch um, some very, very exciting sales training new to the industry. So I won't steal that thunder uh, yet, but do watch this space on that. And we will touch on some of that training throughout this workshop. Um, and the third pillar is to develop through sales planning. So we will create your three, six, nine, 12 month sales plans. And then the last pillar is obviously one of the most important bits, which is delivery. So I have my team of consultants that come from different levels. So I have my senior team, I have my executive team, and we run white label sales teams, which we currently do for Green King and Boparin. So um, fingers crossed that explains a little bit about what we do. Um, it's been a good year um, up until COVID, but we are, I'm really fortunate with the team. Uh, we've worked really, really hard in the background to, to start launching some new stuff and we've got some fantastic clients. So um, hopefully I can, I can equip you with some tools and knowledge today that's a bit different that you can implement into your businesses tomorrow. <laughs> are you on mute, Christian? <laughs> Uh, did you want to put up the presentation yeah, and start talking brilliant. us through it? That was Let's great. do this. So um, how, I've, how I've led this out, guys, is this is a it's workshop based. So I'm hoping that within this format, there's some really good um, ideas and innovation um, that comes through. What I will say, however, is that there are there is a lot a lot of 
basics that we need to think about fundamentally when we talk about sales, the sort of foundations. And I think particular if we use the term the new world and, and, and living with COVID and, and pubs, restaurants, bars starting to reopen, it's a really, really good time to reset and, and, and re-deliver your basics. So that is why um, I have set this out into three parts. So the first part is looking at arguably the most important, so strategy. What is it that you should be working on now and why? And just to reiterate, this is very much about the now and the next three months. So I think at the moment, it's quite difficult for any of us to look further ahead than that. So this is all uh, sort of hints and ideas to get you started now. Um, obviously, systems and processes, really, really important. So this is going to be taking us through about 20 minutes for section one. Section two, probably the exciting bit for most of us and probably the main reason you're all here is, is sales opportunities. So where should you be focusing your time and energy now? Whether you've got a sales team, a marketing team or not, um, how should you actually be selling your, your venue, your pub, your bar and who to? Really, really important. And then the third bit, which is the kind of fluffy bit, but actually the bums on seats philosophy is what do we do to build longstanding relationships and drive guest loyalty and guest experience? And they really are the most fundamental. And that this, this bit around customer relationships is your caveat to the terrible situation we're all feeling at the moment with no shows, so on and so forth. So I'm going to spend a bit of time at the end going through that. And you'll be pleased to know I've got a lovely little video that kind of summarizes it all quite nicely. So without further ado, let's move over to uh, the first part, strategy systems and processes, which is all about getting the basics right. Now, what I always like to do is just very, very quickly, I'm sure some of this is, is, is obvious, but it's really good just to, to really reset in our minds why pre-book sales is so important. So just to run through these, we've got the safety and control, operational efficiency helps drive your labor. Obviously, pre-ordering is key. Prepayments and security deposits, so that minimizes all your no-shows. Increase your spend per head. You can do all of that in advance. Make sure that we put the customers first. We can gain invaluable customer feedback, more important now than ever. Excellent customer interaction without the need for face-to-face -face interaction. And of course, it drives repeat visits. But also, it enables you to look at your off-peak trading times and utilize all of your bookable space. So we're going to go through that a little bit in this in this workshop as well. Um, from a GM perspective or a site perspective, obviously it's your p &L. It helps you achieve bonus. There's a monetary benefit to it. Um, it drives revenue and profit. It will assist with turning tables and how we monitor that. Again, at the moment, very, very important with such limited capacity. It's the way that you can build trust with your, with your customer and consumer confidence. And ultimately, as I I've touched on the relationships and loyalty piece. So I think at the moment, pretty much every operator that I've certainly spoken to really understands now that, that we need a pre-book sales strategy and we need to make sure that we've got that set up in terms of your process. From a guest perspective, arguably more important at the moment, um, it helps them feel valued and appreciated because they know that they've got that point of contact. It helps to keep them on top of budget so we can find out how much they've got to spend, how they want to spend it on food and drink. They can pre-order, which means less a delay in terms of service on arrival and throughout the, the visit. Um, it's also about any queries or questions. If you have somebody there dedicated to deal with pre-book sales or the venue understand the strategy for that, you can deal with all of those in advance. So you can, you can really counter the amount of touch points you have to have with the customer by providing them with loads of information from the very beginning. It gives the customer a peace of mind. They know that they're gonna get seated, sometimes, not always, but where they want to. Um, and they get that they have this feeling of, I'm being taken care of by an expert. You know more about your venue than they do. Um, they want to appear to be the booking superhero. You can offer them that service through pre-book sales. Um, absolutely fundamental from both sides, whether it's our staff at the moment or the customer is that feeling of safety and security. Um, minimizing the amount of time people have to wait or queue. Great first impression of the venue, hopefully, and gain a personal contact at the venue. And often, I've seen this so often, when you deliver a great guest experience through pre-book sales, they will want to go and deal with you over and over again. It really is that, that element of trust. Um, therefore, you're creating this ease for future bookings. And the, the, the 
best way to get repeat business is a really good pre-book sales structure with some technology to back it up. Um, everyone has a seat and like I've said, trust. So overall, this is, it's quite a powerful tool that we've got. And it's something that for, in my mind, every operator at the moment should be really taking some time to get it right. As I mentioned at the beginning, one of the, the bums on seats pillars is auditing. And I've created um, sort of nine or 10 key areas that when we go and deliver audits for clients, this is what we look at. And I want to share that with you because there's probably some stuff in here that you've put, you already do, and maybe you do it all the time, but there might be some new bits in here that you can go away and take a look at. Why auditing is important is it really does help you understand what your business needs are. And so often, as we're so busy, and as we know, hospitality is, we're working 80 hours a week, 100 miles an hour, and everything is yesterday. We don't often get time to go back and analyze and review what we're doing. And there's some really quick wins in here. So the first place I would start is to run your own mystery calls, mystery visits. You can get friends, family, any member of staff to do this. You don't need to be paying a fortune for it. Uh, bookable space optimization. It's going into your venue with fresh eyes and walking around and saying, okay, knowing that we've got the limited capacity, knowing that we've built consumer confidence and consumer behavior is changing, how can we optimize our space differently? And I'm gonna show you some examples of that a bit later. The most important is, is your web booking journey and inquiry journey. Um, and actually out of all of this, what I've done for you is I've picked out the top four, which I'll show you in a second. I've given you some hints and tips so you know what detail to go into. All your back of house process, your social media call to actions, are they driving bookings, local marketing database and your whole proactivity piece and your Wi-Fi data all fits into that as well. Online reviews, business reputation, so important. If you're somewhere that's done takeaway, click and collect, you're going to be judged in the same light. So really think about how that works with your dining or drinking versus your takeaway and delivery. It's, you're, going to, you're going to get the reviews all across the same platforms. Um, SEO, online visibility, really important. Your booking system, is it right for you now? Does it deliver everything you need it to do? And there are some really fantastic booking systems now and some, some great development that's happening all the time to make sure we're matching the system to the customer behavior and what the customer wants. Your current reservations and sales structure, if you're lucky enough to still have one, because not many people are. So if you're not, every single person that's answering the phone, are they all answering inquiries? How well trained are they? Uh, the product offering, your packages, set menus, upsell, terms and conditions. This is a huge thing at the moment, right? Because there's so much opportunity actually that's come out of COVID, but also there's been, it's, it's been a really difficult time to think about what people are actually going to be buying from you now. Um, Pre-booked revenue streams and demographics. We're going to go into a little bit of that because that's really your sales opportunities. What is your peak off peak offer at the moment? What are you looking for in terms of cancellations and no shows? What are your rules and regulations? And then the whole piece at the end around the quality of customer guest communication. How quickly are you responding and how professional and how experienced are the people dealing with the inquiries? So I think we are going to share this with you. But if you get a chance, the first place I would always start is a current audit. Following from that, you will start to identify some strategy. And, and I've just written here for you some sort of really headline strategic um, summary points that I think at the moment are really, really important. So as I, I've adhered to online customer journey, and I'll show you some stuff on that in a sec. Um, at the moment for me, your entire limited capacity, you wanna be pre-book that 100%. Now, as restrictions start to lift, you don't want to drop your pre-booked capacity. You just want to bolt on with walk-in trade. Pre-booked absolutely is the way to counter all thing challenges like labor, so on and so forth. So you've got to think about what it is, what volumes of pre-booked do you want? It's, it's the best way at the moment that you can control and guarantee safety. I've got lots of evidence around consumer occasions um, that I'll share with you, but it's got to be your focus. So I'm going to pop up in a sec or a bit later on some, some a big list of consumer occasions of stuff that you can go after and how, but it really is at the moment, the biggest sales tool that we've got is to go after this type of business.
Um, be very proactive with existing customers. And we, Bums on Seats, all the time harp on about the importance of phone calls. Um, and, you know, not just sending um, monthly or, or fortnightly or weekly emails, actually picking up the phone and engaging with customers and empathizing with the situation at the moment. Really important. Um, make sure you do that all important review of your spaces and think about what that looks like for peak and off peak. And I've got some really good ideas for you for off peak trading. Um, and we forget this in sales um, again, and it's uh, it's something that I, I always uh, sort of bang on about, but sales is about pipeline. It's about not just business taking place, but business on the book. So you've got to look ahead. Sometimes we're gonna be doing things in, in sales that you won't reap the rewards of for six months. I've made sure this workshop is about immediate as much as I possibly can, but it's just really good practice to continually think about three months, six months, 12 months. Um, obviously targets and key performance indicators. And there's a huge gap in our sector, I think, about how we're reporting pre-book sales. And if you get a chance to go back and reset that, or you want any help with that, just let us know, because it's so important that you know what's working, what's selling, what days of the week, what's your conversion rates, how many inquiries are you actually converting? And if not, why not? And actually your no-show rate, we should absolutely be reporting on that. And, you know, the home and office delivery click and collect isn't going anywhere. It's great additional revenue streams. I'm sure a lot of you are doing it and doing it really, really well. But just make sure that that's integrated into your overall sales and marketing plan for pre booked Because as I, I mentioned earlier, the customer will judge you in the same light. So systems and processes, the big four. Our big four, um, if you do nothing else and you just look at this, it, it, are these. So customer journey, terms and conditions, and we've put no shows in there for obvious reasons, um, team communication, and something that I've created, which I'm calling PVI, which is your personal best introduction. So customer journey. So what you can do, guys, is you can take some of this and just use it as a bit of a checklist um, for when you're doing your own customer booking journey audit. Um, first thing, very obvious, but how simple is it to navigate and make a booking or inquiry? And if you're too in the detail of it, do get friends and family to do it. Obviously, it needs to be minimal clicks and very, very visual. Um, make sure that you've got a very clear call to action book button inquiry button in very prominent positions across your website. And actually the same for your social media channels and stuff now as well. You don't want to be losing customers. If you haven't done recently a Google Analytics of your website and where customers are dropping off, do it because it's really, really insightful. Um, at the moment, we've been working a lot with people like Headbox and they are delivering some fantastic um, sort of virtual tours and, uh, you know, 3D um, imagery of your spaces. And sometimes, yes, it can be quite costly. So it depends on your budgets. We don't all have thousands of pounds to spend at the moment. My God, no, we don't. But it's worth getting some quotes and having a look at that because we know it's competitive. We know it's competitive market. And I fundamentally believe that a customer going on your website and they can, if they can see a virtual tour, if they can see some really good imagery of your bookable spaces now of how your table layouts have changed and this kind of 3D way of thinking, they are more likely to book and inquire with you. It's an absolute fantastic lever. And let's face it, you know, we're all getting used to working in this way of Zoom, etc. We all want to make decisions from the comfort of our own home. So get that, get that updated if you can. Um, quick and informative confirmation emails, and we'll touch on that with T's and C's. As many touch points of upselling as possible. So how easy are my menus? How easy are my allergens? How easy is it to see my packages and, and what that means and what the cost is? Have you maximized all of those opportunities? Can they just add packages to their booking? And again, there are booking systems now that do allow that to happen. Uh, and it does make a huge, huge difference. Is your online booking journey compatible with smartphone? Really obvious, but if you haven't changed the website for a while, it might not be, um, or it might not be as good as it can be. So it's a really good time to look at that. Um, and as many automated booking reminders as possible. Of course, we know that we, we should all have the opt-in for the mailing list, but just double check that. And your terms and conditions now more than ever should be very easily available. You don't want customers to keep calling up and checking information or to, to, to you want to manage their expectations and give them as much information. So get that on the website. Um, and quite, I use this term all the time and my team is sick of it, but we do live in this 24 seven instant gratification society now. It's not going anywhere. And your booking system, your, your, your website, that's, that's 24 seven for you. So make sure it's doing what you need it to do and that we are working to consumers and not the other way around. 
Cool. So T's and C's. I am sure that most of you have done this as the very first thing that you've done because, you know, your terms and conditions need to link in with your marketing messaging and everything that you're putting out there. So I'm going to just run through this very, very quickly. Um, table turning times. We know they're critical. 50 minute buffer to clean down tables. Make sure customers know that and they are aware of that and why. Um, restrict your seating allocation time. So really at the moment to maximize capacity, how long are you willing to give a table away for lunch? I again think customers, I know that customers Customers are willing to, to actually have a lesser seating time so you can turn tables and, and capitalize on that space more. So make sure all of your booking times that I've listed there have got the relevant T's and C's and how far can you actually go with that. Um, of course, you need to make sure that your layout is clear and revised and you can build that in as well. But really do, don't be scared to tell customers in terms and conditions the impact of late arrivals. So, you know, we unfortunately, we cannot hold your table if you're more than 15 minutes late because we have reduced capacity. We need to keep customers safe. You know, be really transparent with them. And the same goes for decreasing, increasing numbers. I've booked for eight, four people turn up. There is nothing more frustrating. So build that into your terms and conditions and make sure you're, again, telling them the impact if that doesn't happen. Um, obviously, speed of service, how to order on the day. I would tell customers that in advance. If you do have a track and trace system, if you do have an app, all that stuff can go in your T's and C's, can go on your website, can be explained to the customer via your pre book strategy at the very, very beginning. Um, I've done not, so many visits now, and it's a real mixed bag on how I feel as a customer for the first time walking in after I've booked. And I think we've got to, we can use the pre-booked um, philosophy to, to really help with that. And obviously make sure everything's in layman's terms. Um, unfortunately, reality is that with things like cancellation policies, we are gonna all have to take a softer approach. We can't penalize customers if they do cancel or they are late at the moment, we can't. Um, so there's a, but this is where we kind of talk about that what's immediate first three months and what's longer term. That's not going to be the case forever, but it is the case now. As with all of these things, they're a movable beast. So it's not about just doing it once and walking away. You might have to keep tweaking and keep working on them and keep revising them because that we're just having to be that adaptable at the moment. And then no shows, ah, no shows. Um, I mean, you know, I think we're all feeling slightly annoyed with, with, with this situation. For me, um, there are fundamentally things that you can do and we shouldn't be scared about doing this. There's the option of card detail verification for peak trading hours and you can do that even for two people if you have a booking system that does that. I think personally, as long as you have a 100% no quibble deposit refund guarantee, which you probably are going to need to have, you can ask for a £5 deposit um, that's redeemable for groups of four or more. I, I honestly don't see why you, should, you, you couldn't do that. And again, if we're building that relationship and we're explaining to customers why we're asking for that and how they get the money back, they will understand. Um, but the biggest thing you can do is get as much pre-ordered as possible and prepaid as possible. So, you know, but buckets of beer, bottles of wine, you're not reinventing the wheel. Six cocktails for X price. It doesn't have to be like revolutionary, but just think about what you're upselling in your packages because customers are way likely to cancel and not, and not turn up if they've actually pre-ordered and prepaid, of course. So don't be scared to put those in, but like I say, do it in a very gentle way with a, with a, with a refund guarantee. Um, that's where the clear communication comes in. And, and I don't know if you can see the top here. There's a lovely little text from, um, from Cahoots um, that we, were, we, we did a sort of mystery visit on uh, last week. And their text message was so great and you can read it. And it's giving customers a chance to reconfirm. Now, if you don't reconfirm, it doesn't cancel your booking, but it's asking you to reconfirm or cancel. Now, I think there's this bit of a, back in the day anyway, there was always this myth that we need to make it really difficult for customers to cancel. It's like, no, we don't. Because if you make it difficult for customers to cancel, they'll just not turn up. So the, the most transparent and genuine you can be, if you do have a system that we, where you can send text messages to reconfirm on the day, do it. Um, but you can't be a good old fashioned phone call and reworking your working week. So on the day, everybody that's got a booking with you from midday onwards, you give them a call to reconfirm. Don't be afraid of the phone and don't be afraid to leave a voicemail either. And you can say in the voicemail, please reconfirm this. We're getting a lot of no shows. We just need to manage it for, 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 for capacity reasons and be really transparent. Um, and then the last thing which we're going to go into later is their rapport and the relationship. I mean, like if, if, if customers are loyal to you, they will at least cancel and not just not turn up.
Um, but loyalty drives sales. Great. And then the next one, which I'm just going to scoot over, is the team communication bit. Actually, really, really important. And there's so often this um, sort of uh, can, can easily be a disjoint between what somebody agrees on the phone with a customer or puts in writing an email to what the operations team have to deliver. Um, and it's and it's and it's really easy to fix with with communication. So. Um, First of all, manage expectations. Um, we've actually uh, implemented a system internally called Slack, and I've removed emails from, from, from the company. I know that's really bold, but I have. Obviously not with clients, just internally, and it has completely revolutionized the way that we work. I don't think WhatsApp is, is, is a good way of communicating. So think about this, again, the idea of innovation and us all working differently. How can you, what can you implement? Go back in your audit and reevaluate your past team communication and reset what that looks like to the new world. Absolutely. If you don't, you're not going to all have the staff in at the same time on the same day. It's going to be even harder to do that. So what are your Zoom weekly staff briefings? In that briefing should be absolutely what of our pre-book sales this week? What groups have we got? What occasions have we got? Any special requests? And that should be a really key part of that, of that meeting. A clear process for communication with group bookings, massive, massively important. Obviously, we've got capacities of up to six at the moment, so not such a big thing for now. But moving forward, your run sheets, your pre-orders, your deposit systems, how clear is all of that? Um, something that we we've done a lot with clients is creating a manual for the site and it sounds really really stupid but anybody could pick up the phone anybody could deal with an inquiry especially at, at lunchtime and that kind of key key trading periods so how do you counter that how do you cover that caveat that obviously training is key but what's the kind of quick check that that people can have so they know the very basics of what they need to deliver um, think about motivating your team to promote bounce back offers. So for dining and takeout, I'm sure a lot of you are doing that. But if someone's dining in, how do you get them to take your takeout? If someone's taking out, how do you get them to dine in? There's loads of stuff around that that needs to, that needs to happen. And, and communication from sales front of house operations. Our mantra is meeting, greeting, seating, eating. Really, really important. So make sure that, 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 that those two all sing in harmony. Um, it's such a shame if you do a fantastic job with the customer and then you don't really the information the information doesn't get related and operationally there's an issue or vice versa so it's got to be it's got to be seamless and the, the two departments have to work together really really well um great so getting to the end of the section one but um here we are so this is my pbi so the four p's for your personal best introduction if you can deliver these four um they're absolutely you will deliver the the the, the guest experience that that will set you aside. It's amazing how these four don't happen. Um, and it's very easy to be good. So um, a prompt CRT. CRT is customer response time. Um, a professional introduction. Now we are selling fun. So when I say professional, I don't mean I don't mean boring, but there is a fundamental way that we should all answer the phone. It's dull, but it's just the way it is. Um, a positive guest experience and the perfect customer service. Okay, so prompt CRT, professional introduction, positive guest experience, and perfect customer service. Prompt CRT. So back in, uh, you know, years ago, I remember training into late night London, um, two hour response time, two hour response time. And that at the time was revolutionary because it was always four hours or 24 hours. The fact now is that it's so competitive and people don't just look at three venues. They often look at five, um, especially with the with this uh, the COVID. We've got to make sure that we can reply and respond to customers as quickly as possible because it makes them feel valued. And it absolutely there is evidence in, in our training and research to show that it completely increases your conversion rate and how much business that you take. So how do you achieve a quick customer response time and how does that work when you're busy on the floor and maybe you don't have anyone dedicated to do it? And there are some really good options out there now. So, um, you know, Design My Night Collins, they have an automated bookings line for uh, peak hours and peak times um, that will just help to make sure that you capture everything. So that's key. Professional introduction. So obviously using your personality, um, repres being a representation of the band, brand. And this is where if you have got different people potentially answering the phone and dealing with inquiries, you need that piece to say, guys, this is our standard of this venue. This is how we do it. So be organized, professional, have the information to, to, to hand um, and make sure that you get the customer details down efficiently and accurately. Um, that is the only bit of, a, of, of anything think that we train or I train that's scripted you know there is a, there is a script for an introduction because it's basic the rest of it is personality and flair 
Um, positive guest experience. So that is, this is a, an interesting one. I, I often say to people, what do you think we mean by guest experience? And everyone's got different views. And of course, there's experience in our sector is a complete buzzword and has been for some time. And we've got some great companies that provide fantastic experiences. But what I mean in this remit, in the sales remit, is this is the customer's perception of you and your venue. Um, it's their perception of you. So you are responsible for their immediate first impression of you and therefore the reflection on the venue. Um, customers will value now the experience they receive over offer and cost and this is why one of the many reasons why i hate discounts and the discount culture and why we would never suggest that to a client unless it was a clear marketing dynamic um, as a one-off campaign off peak okay so there are exceptions to that but it's the experience that will drive loyalty it's the experience that will overcome any challenges around cost or offer absolutely key we know it has become a top priority for so many businesses, people like Airbnb, um, Virgin, EasyJet, there's so many examples. And our industry hospitality is really catching on to this now. So guest experience is, 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 is massive. And therefore, if you deliver those three, that all creates this, this perfect customer service, um, which is fundamental that we get that right now. So PBI, how do you achieve it? What do you do? Cool. So, Christian, that's uh, that's that's part one done. That's the process and systems, and hopefully some hints and tips. Great. Thanks for that, Amber. Before we get on to kind of some other juicy bits, um, it just yeah. was something that you touched on kind of like um, um, earlier on, yeah. and I'm just I'm thinking and looking through the kind of attendee list in terms of who's here. There are quite a lot of smaller kind of single site operators right. yeah. who are kind of there. So, I guess just in terms of bums on seats, which size of business do you look at, and also. I mean, from looking through, looking at it from an entrepreneur's perspective, if I did run maybe one or two businesses and I didn't have a CRM system, if I didn't have all of this kind of stuff in place, you know, maybe having an audit might, might be, what's the worst audit you've seen and how do you turn it around? <laughs> just to give people a bit of a point of reference. And I just guess from a smaller company perspective, yeah. what you've kind of done around that side of things. And I guess the other bit also just to touch on is like, if you could just maybe walk us through, for example, with Boparin, which brand you worked with, what you kind of did in that kind of scenario and what the result was at the end, that would be yeah. great. Great. So um, let me just go back to the first question. So interestingly, we actually, most of the audits, apart from BrewDog, um, most of the audits I have done in the last eight, nine months have all been to independents and small, much smaller operators and groups. Um, if you... And, and, and when you mention CRM system, that I, would, I wouldn't worry too much if you, if you don't have that, I can't afford that, but your booking system is really important. And actually all you're talking for the industry leading booking system is 129 pounds a month. Now, when you look at everything you get for that, which even includes listings on, on, their, on, their, on their websites, et cetera, it really, it more than pays for itself. So depending on the size of the business or the scale, we would advise based on what's best for in, and affordable for that, for that company. But most certainly we work with, I mean, you know, El Prato I've mentioned, uh, Duck and Rice we've done audits for. Um, so it, it, this isn't about how big you are, how small you are. It's just about identifying business needs. And actually even more important in smaller sites is pre-book sales, to be honest, um, because it can often be, be more competitive. Um, the other question you asked was Boparin. So I think the most relevant to that is Carluccio. So we were working with Carluccio's for nearly all of last year. We set up a, um, a white label central sales team for them, which was one of my senior guys, Jamie, who is um, fantastic. He was their national account manager. He was working four days a week, which was more cost effective for them. But actually, when you work with, with us in that remit, you sh it shows that you, you still get, you get more than the time always. Um, he introduced Carluccio it shows to national account business which believe it or not they had never worked with before that is a combination of stag and hen travel and tour and also um private hiring events um i, I guess I, it doesn't matter too much if i talk numbers because they uh, this was uh, they obviously have gone into administration since been bought so back in carlicio's last year we in in six months we delivered more than half a million pounds worth of net sales for them from from zero um, wow. and just about taking them into a market that was right for them following our own audit of that business and identifying what they needed and um, on the back of that um Bo Parin, we started work with them this week um, and we are picking up everything that we left off with Carlucci's but really exciting we're also going to be doing cinnamon 
and Fishworks, and hopefully the other brands in the future as well. So, and that's come off the back of knowing that irrespective of, of what was such a shame and happened to half the company, we know that they fundamentally know that they need, they need sales and they need that resource. And it's more cost effective for them to outsource it than it is internal. Great, thank you for that. And, yeah, and okay. just with the white label model, so Jamie, for example, yeah. would have had a Carlet Joe's email address. He would have been Correct. exclusively working on Carlet Joe's. Yes. So Jamie, uh, as far as a customer is concerned, Jamie is their national sales manager. Um, that's really important to me that, that that's right. Um, Jamie did, does work five days a week for me. So his fifth day, he did do some other little projects for me with, uh, with a couple of other uh, companies and helped me very much with, with our Green King account. Um, but ultimately, Jamie, as far as anyone was aware, he was their full-time national sales manager. Great. Great. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Amber. On with part two. Brilliant. So sales opportunities, done, done, done. Okay, so what I have done is a, a kind of just a brain dump for you of all of the consumer occasions that you should be looking at and focusing on now. So just to give you some, some, some meat on the bones as to why I think consumer occasions are the way forward. Um, We've done obviously a lot of uh, analysis in the last few weeks on the types of bookings that are coming in with our clients, but also bigger picture. And last week I had a really long conversation with, with Headbox um, and they have for the first time ever in one week, they had started to see significant sales increase and I won't speak numbers for, for them. It's not my place, but significant sales increase. And that was coming from um, all consumer birthday parties, baby showers, anniversaries. I then match that with what we know uh, in the rest of the sector and I like this is your quickest win. People have been in isolation, they have been stuck at home, they have had birthdays and all these celebrations, they want to go out for this. So have a look at what you are currently offering with these key occasions. Now, you might not do them all. <laughs> and this isn't also about creating lots of different menus and offers, which I'll, I'll show you why that isn't the case in a second. But really think about if I am a customer and I'm putting in birthday locations, you know, Charing Cross, for example, are you going to be, are you visible in that market? And that's a really good uh, bit of advice I would give you is whenever you decide that you're going to go through it for one revenue stream, uh, sports packages, Sunday rows, do your own SE keyword search in Google with your location and all the different keywords search and see who comes up and how you can get in that remit. The other part of this, and I've been working closely with Work Club HQ, which has um, just launched their awesome. It's an app that's free for venues, but paid for customers to find co-working spaces in pubs, bars, restaurants. Um, this for me is another huge part of the market that is, is we've always steered away from in hospitality because it's a really low spend per head. And it's like, what well, I'm going to make eight quid in three hours from coffee and a croissant. And I, and I do get that. But the fact is people are staying working from home. Um, they are wanting to go out and work outside of their home. And there are some really clever packages that you can pull together. Um, and of course, it's the bigger picture circle of influence I always talk about. And what I mean by that is, yes, you may only get a tenner spent per head from someone in an hour and a half because they've just come in with their laptop and you sold them a couple of coffees. But who are they going to talk to about it? They'll be checking in on Facebook. It's opening up a different world. It's also probably opening up a slightly different demographic. It might be a younger demographic. It's, it's really something to consider. And it's off peak often as well. So it could be tied in with your kind of breakfast, brunch offer or, or late afternoon, mid afternoon, post lunch time. So have a little look at that list. Um, what I would not be focusing on now is your hen and stag market, it's not gonna bounce back till next year. Travel and tourism, we work very closely with Hospitality Line, who are one of the, obviously, UK's largest uh, travel operators. I know for a fact from the MD that they really are not looking to see travel and tourism bounce back till next April. So I would not, I would not put that on your focuses. Um, I think you can start thinking about menus if you want to go after that market and make sure that they're briefed into the operators by November, because that, that's the time, that's the deadline, but you're not going to see any sales on the books, I don't think until April. Um, and the corporate functions and event side, um, big conferences, all of that, it's just not going to happen this year. And I think if anything, the only way it will happen is virtually. So you've got to think about the spaces that you've got where you normally have corporate functions and events in a different way. And that's where often the co-working stuff and the celebrations can really help as being your focus. 
Um, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. We, I mean, I, I find it amazing. I normally talk about Christmas from January for the next year and we're, I'm still saying, do you know what guys, it's not the most important thing at the moment. We need a really good Christmas in the industry. We don't know what's gonna happen. Definitely it's not gonna be big company you know, um, parties. It might be, it will be departments. It might be, there might be more opportunity for whole venue takeovers because it's one company coming from here to you. Um, and the sooner you can do Christmas, always the better because people have still got budgets. But I certainly wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have it as an immediate focus. I would have it to launch in probably, um, for, ideally have it ready to go from, from the beginning of September. Um, in terms of packages, and I think it gets quite scary when you list all these occasions and reasons people can come and visit you, but it doesn't mean you need a different offer. So what, I, what we've done here is I've just shown you, you know, individual daily on the left. So these are the ones where you probably do need a different offer. Okay, so this is, this is your core trade, essentially. On the right is your calendar events, but often if you do go after calendar events, and at the moment they're you know, null and void anyway, so again, this isn't necessarily immediate, but some of that will feed from your, from your core anyway, apart from Christmas, which is standalone, will always be the same as every year, to be honest. Um, but then in the middle here, you've got your crossover, and it's just about how you market and repackage it. So your birthday offer could actually be very similar to what you're saying about for anniversaries, engagements, celebrations, baby showers. So think about celebrations as an entirety as opposed to um, you know, having to have individual individual packages. And that just helps because I do think we need to simplify. And there was a time in hospitality where, I, I mean, I remember a couple of clients where we'd be like, we've got like 25 menus and it's just crazy. It's operationally inefficient. It doesn't help the customer at all. It's not as something I'd ever advise. So think smart with that. So it'd be awful of me to talk about sales and not have some sort of funnel. So this just sort of summarizes that for you. But, you know, identify your booking occasion and target. And what I always say is, so what? Why are you going to be famous for this? So what out of that big list is your top three? I'm going to go for celebrations. I'm going to be a destinational place for, at the moment for celebrations because I know that's why consumers are coming out. Consumers are coming out less frequently, but when they come out, it means more at the moment. So that's what I'm going to do. So once you decide on that, create your package and price, do some market research, and then write a sales plan, do your Google word search, think about what third parties you need to push that out to, to increase your reach, what are your lead generate uh, opportunities, and uh, is this destination or local or both? And following these three things, every time you want to do something, just make sure that you, you, you really go for it, um, because it's not about being all things to all people. But my best advice at the moment is celebrations market is, is, is a good place to be. Um, so just to summarise for you here, um, go back to Basics, write a list of all your possible booking occasions um, with your off-peak peak spaces, looking at your spaces differently because knowing that there's parts of your business that aren't going to come back until next year. And then think about how you're going to offer that and how you're going to approach that. And I literally can do it with a paper and pen. Um, make sure you're reconnecting with all previous bookers via the phone. And that is a really nice job for a waiter, a waitress, you know, whatever. Like, it's a really nice job for that. It doesn't have to be a salesperson. It's just a, how are you doing? Just to let you know we're open. We've, we've opened with these safety measures. You can write a little bit of a script if it's someone that's not necessarily skilled. Um, and, and just get that bit done and, and do engage in rapport and conversations with people. And don't just think about customers for the last who have cancelled in the last three months. Think about, you know, think about who have been your loyal customers. How are you going to use that database? Um, make sure you get your, a really good marketing and sales plan for insight dining, private hire, call, call and uh, click and call, click, click and collect, sorry, or your takeaway. So those elements should all sit under one plan because remembering what I said that it's, you'll be judged in the same light. Uh, packages for all of your spaces really important because then they can go on your website and your booking system or you can upsell them you can take payments for them you won't get no shows um, and it's really easy for the customer to understand I come in and I get that and it's ready on my table when I arrive so it's minimizing touch points and everything as well um, please don't discount and um, I really feel at the moment we've got to be really careful with that obviously we've got the, the initiative coming in um, for the 50% for August, which is which is great, and the government are funding that, and that's amazing. But just be careful when when we when we go down this percentage discounting or two for one route. I think it's more about how what you know more about the thinking about that off peak training occasion and what packages you can put in and why people would visit at that time, um, like the co working stuff. A Christmas offer, delivery, and on site. So this is um, another thing. 
I, I think, you know, no, God forbid that we have another uh, lockdown. That would be horrendous. Um, but it's a possibility. And, and, and unfortunately for me in business at the moment, I always plan, you know, plan for the worst and hope for the best. If that happens, can you do, what can you deliver off site for Christmas? Have a think about that. Is it a Christmas party in a box, for example? Some of you will be able to do that, do it. Some of you won't. Um, how do you do virtual Christmas parties? So there's some, there's some really good examples of that um, kicking around. Um, so what local community? So don't just now do the normal in your local community. You know, really think about who can you link up with, um, especially you know if you're in a, if you're not in like you know central London. Um, think about what it is. Who have you got there that you can tap into and actually work better with? Don't just do your normal NHS discount. You know, everyone does the ten percent. Think bigger than that. Think better than that. Um, third parties and collaborations for me are just fundamental um, and that goes with um, your suppliers as well but who do you want to link up with now who is right for your reach there's some great examples there's one called orchid spa that just focus fully on consumer occasions um, have a look at those guys but this is a really really good time to, to, to increase your reach uh, obviously suppliers I've mentioned Helen Stagg not till next year, but start thinking about it because the staycation market, Hennestag market is going to grow in the UK next year and Airbnb. So if you're somewhere where you have Airbnbs near you, engage in conversations with the owners now. What collateral can you get in that Airbnb? What contra deals can you do with them? Really, really good tip. We've done this recently. It's worked really, really well. I know, for example, Brighton at the weekend was back to almost full capacity with, with Airbnb. I've got a couple of contacts there, which is great. So people are starting to try travel around the UK and if you've got a site near that you need to be jumping on that you need to be the first one in there to say how do I get your your the people staying with you to come and visit me um, birthdays, anniversaries, we talked about that. Uh, co coffee workspaces, do have a look at Work Club HQ, I'll sh share their details, but that's a really, really good way of capitalizing on off peak. Uh, rework existing individual products to easy to understand pre book packages. So that all goes down to what I've already said. Um, office delivery, virtual parties, you know, we, we've been working on things like date night in a box, stuff like that, which you might think that's not pre book sales but it's another revenue stream and it's the same customer. Um, and they will, if, if you can deliver that offsite, they will come on site. So, you know, it's, that's why it's really important to always talk about all of these in the same light. Um, visual and virtual experiences and imagery, we've already talked about that. Uh, call, collect, click and collect. This is a great lever for lunch. So especially people working from home or, you know, if they don't want to come and sit in, make sure that they can come and just click and collect and pick up from you at lunchtime and then go. Also helps to con compete with if it ever bounces back, but that kind of street food culture, um, because you're actually offering a very similar service. Um, Strategize about what you can offer guests who aren't in your venue. We've talked about that. Easy to understand packages and bolt-ons. And this for me is, is, is got to be going for you, you know, I want house wine, premium wine, so on and so forth. So think about that scale. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't have to be complicated. Lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. How can you promote that? Um, shout louder and innovate. Um, really, really important. I think this is now the time for me where venues should be really bold with what they're doing, how they're doing it and why. Um, don't, be, don't be a shy flower. Um, really, really talk about, about what it is that you're doing and why. Um, and then proactive hire. I'm going to very quickly skirt over this because it, it's, it's a really difficult market at the moment. Um, as I said, we don't know what's going to happen. I think it's, it's certainly big conferences and events aren't really going to kick off till next year. But think about if there is a way you can review and adjust your offer. Um, make sure you address health and safety concerns if you are still going to say, I mean, the private dining room scenario is, 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 should still be when we can increase capacity post six people, that is, of course. Um, obvious question I always ask, why should they buy? Is the offer itself appealing and price sensitive in relation to the target market? Are you offering flexible payment and cancellation terms? Sure, you know, we didn't have to do that before. We do have to do that now. Balance profit with affordability. So things like, can you waiver or stagger higher fee at the moment? How can you entice customers back? Uh, we've all done the old school, you know, complimentary fizz reception. But what, what is there that's more innovative than that, that we can actually add value to the customer? And again, it might be that there's different parts of your business that you can, that you can offer within that. Uh, make the most of what you can host. So with the capacity restrictions, 
think about a blueprint table plan um, about you know different ways of showing table plans and mapping that out so you know we've got all the, the old school theatre style what does that look like now so on and so forth um, and you can get all of that stuff in a pack ready to go uh, market smart not hard so always in private high proactive high it's about the relationships if you do have a lot of third parties at the moment that you currently book with you um, for proactive high private hire this is the time to pick up the phones and say what's happening what's the volume of bookings what what are we looking like and just get get some insight from them um, virtual venues are you in a position to deliver venues online so you know can you do those experiences online again not all of you can some of you some of you will be able to do it really well it does take quite a lot of thinking outside the box it does take quite a lot of planning um, but it's something to utilize your spaces that you can obviously still still charge for sort of revenue stream um, and make sure that you do plan ahead now and there has to be for all of us i think some contingency planning in place um, uh, but definitely you know don't hold back i would people said to me should I start promoting private hiring stuff yet yeah. and I think you know what actually yes this is this is a really really good time even though we know there's restrictions of up to six at the moment I think we know that they're going to be lifted you've got to put yourself in that remit for Christmas in particular cool so that is sales opportunities Christian so summary really is is uh, the most important thing I think I said was the consumer celebration occasion piece Excellent. And from, I mean, you mentioned the kind of virtual events and the kind of Christmas side of things. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, <laughs> imitation is the greatest form of flattery, as you we were talking yeah. about before. Yeah. Have you seen anybody out there at the moment who you think is really nailing it when it comes to that? Yeah, I mean, I would honestly, um, I sound really like I keep half full about it. I trust you, I'm not on commission, but I would honestly look at Headbox. Okay. Um, because they they have done so much in that market they they've been doing every week some uh, virtual experiences um as well um and i think i think they are they're they're, they're good they're top players in this market at the moment fine and from a christmas perspective i mean sorry this is literally the most loaded question in the world but yeah. um people are talking about the fact that there aren't isn't going to be a lot of corporate stuff but people are going to be doing like small groups small gatherings that kind of side of things if you were gearing a sales plan at the moment is that what you'd be looking towards definitely 100 percent. yeah i think i think there's two things to it um whole venue takeovers depending on your capacity so if you are a smaller site and you you wouldn't typically have ever shut down the restaurant or the or the bar for one customer last christmas because you'd be losing too much money you might want to consider that off peak this christmas so what is a sunday monday tuesday takeover for one company to come and have your entire site if you've got say a capacity of less than 250 i would say so that's something different other than that it's smaller spaces so how do you create clusters of with meetings to two meter distancing of smaller spaces um, and i would probably cap that up to up to 30 per booking i think we're going to see the average booking size drop this year definitely um, and when it comes to sorry i know you touched on it in the first part but when it comes to kind of like you know actual virtual events like the kind of stuff that like secret cinema and those kind of guys would kind of do again i mean um how do, have you seen anybody actually make any revenue after that or is it pure profile building uh, i think it's i think at the from and I, this is you know i i don't know if i'm if this is accurate but from my gut instinct at the moment um i think it's a, there's a lot of profile around it um yeah. I think uh, I think it's been it's so new, isn't it? And the customer for even the customer to experience that. I mean, I know if we take Brewdog as an example, who were very clever and they did their kind of Friday happy hour brew hour, um, and they had a thousand people every yeah. Friday on that, and it was really successful. Did they make any money of it? What it did do was everybody went and bought takeaway. Yeah. delivery so yes it was a, it was a big revenue driver for them so i just think it depends on your dynamic and what it is that how you're actually going to monetize it um because it, these things take time to do and they take time to do well because everyone can do it badly <laughs> so what what is the point of you doing it and how are you going to make it financially viable excellent thank I, you very I would, much basically i wouldn't bother doing it unless you can really do it well personally yeah yeah, yeah absolutely on the part three Cool. So this is my favourite bit. Um, this is the fluff, as I like to say. Uh, genuinely, this is the most important part of sales. And when I, um, I, I wrote a training course um, 
over a glass of wine for Drake and Morgan about five years ago. Um, and it's been a long time in the making, but it was, it's called the miracle sale. And it's a sales acronym that basically takes anybody, whether it's an operator, salesperson, marketer, through the perfect customer journey to build long-term relationships and guest loyalty. And God, has it never been more uh, relevant. And we're actually launching this course officially next week. So I'm not gonna steal too much thunder from it, but this part is just taking a few bits of what is a whole day foundation training course and just hopefully identifying the importance of of doing this so this is the miracle sale um, and the letters stand for i just quickly tell you so m is for mindset i is for introduction information r is for rapport a is for ask questions c is for create experience l is for lockdown and e is for effective now in this bit because i would not dare make you sit through the whole thing um, I'm going to talk mainly about the two probably most important bits for me, which is rapport and asking questions and the rapport bit predominantly. So without further ado, um, we want guests to be loyal and we want repeat visits. It's more challenging now than ever, as we know. We therefore believe in something called the virtuous circle of bums on seats. And this is the idea that as you repeat this process over and over again, and I don't know if anyone remembers, but years and years and years ago, there was always an example of a, um, I can't remember the restaurant actually, but the, well, what, it was a French restaurant. And what they did is if a new customer walked in, um, the maitre d' would recognize they were a new customer because they either hadn't made a booking or they made a booking they weren't currently in their database. And he would put a red napkin on the table, which would let everybody else know in the restaurant that this customer had never been there before. What would then happen is the sort of front of house would come over and say, thank you for coming in for the first time. And they would give them a, a glass of uh, Prosecco or whatever. And then they would give them a voucher to say, please come and visit us again. And they would take the contact details. They then get a call to say, thanks for coming. Would you like to book for a second visit? And the customer would be so blown away because of the service they received the first time and the follow-up call. Of course, they were going to book for a second visit. They come in for a second visit. Everyone knows it's a second visit because it's marked very clearly in the data, on the database, on the, on the reservation sheet. That this, is the, this is Mr. Todd's. This is his second visit because we know because we followed it up with a call. And the HD comes over, puts a blue napkin on the table, so everybody knows it was his second visit. Now, at that time, they don't give them anything for free uh, during their, their visit, but they do come over and say, oh, but if you want to come back and visit us again, we've got, you know, lunchtime, we've got a set menu to for £10 or whatever it was. And, oh, great, fantastic. They then get another follow-up call, and guess what? The customer books for a third visit and comes back at lunchtime or whatever the offer was. And very long story short, what do we think is happening? Because of this process, by the third visit, the fourth visit, that customer is then loyal. And they've had such a great experience of being followed up with that they, they go into this virtuous cycle. And the most important thing we can do at the moment for me is contacting customers, encouraging them to rebook, checking back on their experience, building that relationship and not being scared to follow up and say, would you like to come back again? And it's okay when, when I, I, you know, to think about a complimentary coffee or a cocktail or a Prosecco to treat a customer if it's their first visit or to encourage them to come back. There's nothing wrong with that. That for me isn't it's using discounting, it's using what we've got in a, in a really great way um, and showing that the customer is the most important thing. So therefore the virtuous circle, hence why the miracle sale is in a circle because everything we do is about building long, long-term relationships. And that is how you will counter all the other challenges that we have, which is no shows um, and cancellations and, 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 and so on and so forth. People still buy from people and they still want loyalty. So the first, the, the, the first, most important thing I was going to go through now, as I said, is rapport. So we always talk about the first three seconds, the first impression counts. So with rapport building, it's really, really important that you are responsible for, for leading that conversation, but not um, obviously overpowering the conversation. So rapport is very much about talking about other things other than the reason that you would be talking to them about the venue. So it wouldn't be about saying what date, what's, what time, how many people. It would be about saying, how was your weekend? You know, where do you live? Who are you coming with? Where are you coming from? And talking, finding other levels of topic and doing that very, very naturally. The longer we can build rapport with a customer at first over the phone, for example, the better. This is why I so often, my guys know that 
we don't have lots of email communication with anybody because you can't build rapport that way. It's really important. And actually now in particular, if it's talking about a bigger booking or an occasion, a celebration, something important, I would absolutely get that customer on a Zoom call. Don't drag them down to the venue. So, and therefore you spend at least five, 10 minutes doing nothing, but just getting to know who they are. People absolutely respond positively to friendly, open body language and tone of voice. Um, and it's your job to listen and think about that and make the customer feel feel really, really at home and really comfortable. So you've got to make a good first impression. Um, and therefore, if you if you do that and you're listening, you'll find that the conversation will make a, a natural flow. So genuine interest is key. I don't ever believe that we should be robots and we should follow scripts or anything like that. It has to be really genuine. And it has to flow. Um, mirror match is a really important technique that we I train into my team and we use a lot. And that is about where. How, what tone of voice is your customer? How do you match to that? So if you're going into a conversation and the customer's very quiet, obviously, I know at the moment I'm coming across very bold, but I wouldn't necessarily be like that with a quiet customer. My job is to go down to the customer's level and then to bring them up, not the other way around. The same with body language and tone. If you've got a customer that you know isn't comfortable with making eye contact, the last thing you can do is just keep staring at them or, 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 or anything else. You have, to, you have to be aware of how that customer's feeling. There is a hell of a lot of psychology um, in sales and rapport building in particular, and it's really, really important, especially when we're talking about different generations and we train a lot on um, how do we deal with a baby boomer versus a gen z versus a millennial and there's a lot of marketing analysis on this but we've done a lot of sales analysis on this um, because it, this is that's the important bit you know you've got to get these relationships right the other thing as well and we've got a whole section of this on the miracle sale that we're launching next week but you know we always talk a lot about complaint handling and how much do we all hate TripAdvisor and how much do we all hate reviews but a strong rapport absolutely alleviates so many problems because they will forgive you anything they'll also tell you about it before uh, it goes online there's so many benefits to it um, it's not it, it just taking taking your time to understand your customers and not just churning uh, churning relationships or, or, or churning bookings out is really really key and I get that there's a time restraint here we can't all spend hours talking on the phone but it's just resetting to whatever is, you, is, is practical for you. How much more can you go to actually build rapport and understand your customer and get relationships in place? Um, but ultimately, you know, like I say, it is down to personality. So think about within your single site or your multi site or whatever it is that you've got, who's best place to be front facing with customers and pre-bookings who's actually got that natural ability and that bubbly personality um, because it does it does it does need that it does demand that and especially i love the gm deputy dynamic where so often but you know one of the two is the kind of you know the, the client facing the, and the other one is the more sort of like p l back of house fundamental and that's a really great dynamic and it's no different in when we're talking about who's dealing with the with phone and, and inquiry and face-to-face and -face with customers so 40% um, of this whole sales process, and by that I mean the point of initial contact with the customer through to, yes, I'm going to book, is all down to just rapport and trust because that's what rapport does, it builds trust. 30% um, is the customer needs and wants, and we'll talk about that in a sec. So 70% of everything we do is just about the relationship. Um, before we even start talking to them about what your spaces are, what you can offer, what your price is, what your package, that is why this is so, 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 so important. I often get a lot, um, can you come in and train my guys how to overcome objections? And I just go, absolutely not, because you know, if, the, if I'm having to train someone how to overcome an objection and they haven't done the first and most important bit right which means they haven't built rapport they haven't understood the customer's needs and wants and they haven't matched that because if you do all of those things and you can you can absolutely deliver what the customer needs then you will not get any objections um, and that's why this bit is fundamental and people so often see sales as like it's it's you know it's about bottom line and it's in and it's out and of course it, it, the whole driver of this is, is bottom line and profitability I wouldn't have a business if, 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 if I didn't do that but it's actually more about the relationship and that's the way that we do it. Um, 
So focusing on pre-book sales enables you to focus on the guest relationship. It's almost like I set that up, uh, which builds loyalty and in turn, of course, increases profit. Um, it's the ability to relate to others and develop a trusting and understanding relationship. It has to be mutually beneficial. Uh, that's when, how we minimize complaints. That's how we make sure that we, we're not over promising and under delivering, so on and so forth. Um, we always want the successful and positive outcome. And when I talk about needs and wants, what I mean by that is I very much focus on your rational needs and your emotional wants. And I'm going to show you a little video to reflect that in a minute. Um, but do do as much as you can on Zoom, phone and that personal approach. If you've got this email culture and you're, you're spending hours going back and forth with customers on email, something's falling over in the approach. So do rework that and relook at that. So here you go. I hope you like this. Why is man free? Only fools rush in. I can't help falling in love with you. Oh, sure. Would it be There we go. So I love that video. Um, and I think it's, it's obviously really relatable because the subject is love. And it, interestingly, the, the one, the most powerful emotion, but the one that we, uh, we, we know the least about. And why I, I use that a lot in training is to really identify that, you know, especially in hospitality as well, we are responsible for so many emotions and so much um, heartfelt, you know, occasions and people spending their hard earned money for a really good time and, mem and memories, essentially. And that's, I think that video really portrays that. Um, I've got some stats in here, as you can see, about why we believe that um, uh, emotions are, are more powerful than logic in decision making. And I think it, it's something like 84% of all purchasing decisions is led from emotion. It's not made, led from logic. So we've got to really focus on that in our sector. Um, so hopefully that's just helped to reset a little bit the importance because, you know, the rational needs are the, the bits around date, time, number of people, but the really important bit is the, is, is the emotional wants. And we've got to drill down into, to, into, into understanding what that is. And it's not just dismissing, you know, at the moment, it's a group of four, what's the emotional want behind that? I mean, like, oh my God, so many things. So, you know, we've got a responsibility at the moment as well, which I think is, uh, is, is, is also an opportunity. So yeah, so I think uh, that's it, Krishna. So yeah, just a few, uh, be passionate, be committed, be genuine. This is my mantra, be think bigger, think bolder and aim higher. So that's what we're trying to do at Bums on Seats at the moment. And I hope uh, I can pass some of that inspiration on to you guys. But yeah, thank you very much for listening to me ramble on. I hope that was Amber, I think that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you very, very, very much. And a whole kind of process there as well. 
Um, so um, I think that was amazing. So you can contact all of Amber's contact details are there, uh, bumsonseats.org. Um, you can also connect up with her on LinkedIn and all of their social channels as well. Um, I'm sure she's got some big news which is coming out that she may let us share on our core recruitment feeds next week, which might be uh, which might be um, interesting for everybody to see as well. But Amber, I think that was fantastic. I've actually written like you know literally like two pages of notes. <laughs> um, about different things that you've kind of like come up with there and I'll definitely be watching this back myself later because uh, it's really good to kind of get a bit of a refresher and I think a lot of the stuff you've actually mentioned could be adapted into lots of different segments as well yeah. um, so I think that's um, I think that's fantastic. Real, thank you I've, I've enjoyed it. Oh, good. I'm very, 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 very glad. So guys, thank you very much for logging into this webinar. We have one on uh, openings coming up at three o'clock, so in about 50 minutes time. So if you want to log back in for that, then absolutely feel free. All of the links are on our social media feeds. A recording of this webinar will be shared on social media and with the attendees later on today. But just leave me to say thank you very much, Amber, and, um, and best of luck over the next couple of weeks. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks, you too. See you all soon. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.